You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Well, good evening and welcome to the MTN 9 o'clock news. I'm Russ Riesinger. Here's what's topping headlines across Montana this Friday. Tomorrow is Small Business Saturday. We're going to take a look at how some local Montana enterprises are preparing for the big shopping day. It's sunshine, fresh powder and beautiful views. Hundreds travel from all across the state to hit the slopes on the opening day of two Montana ski resorts. First, though, racist messages taking on yet another form on the MSU Billings campus this week. The latest arriving in the form of a recorded phone message to campus faculty and staff, creating more uneasiness across the community. Those robocalls apparently made no direct threats, but did use hateful language against African Americans. MSUB Chancellor Dan Edelman tells MTN they're not aware of any new phone messages since Thanksgiving Day, but notes that the campus is closed to celebrate the holiday. Now, earlier this week, Edelman condemned the group Identity Europa after it posted flyers across the MSUB campus. Those flyers depicting Uncle Sam stating, thank you veterans. And while that message isn't controversial, the group putting up the flyers is Identity Europa has been identified as a hate group and a white supremacist organization. The group also took its message to downtown Billings with Identity Europa stickers. Even outside the Q2 studios there in Billings, those flyers were also found at the University of Montana and the Missoula Vietnam Veterans Memorial. A North Dakota family of four is missing tonight after never reaching their destination this Thanksgiving. The Dean family, a mother, father and two children were traveling from Caldwell, Idaho to Ekalaka, Montana. They were last heard from Thursday morning around 630 in Billings, saying the family would reach its destination around 11 a.m., but they never did arrive. And here you can see some pictures of the family. Chelsea Dean is a member of the Manville, North Dakota Volunteer Fire Department. She's traveling with her husband, Anthony, and their two children. They are driving a black SUV and towing a uh, older Toyota Corolla. The Carter County Sheriff's Office confirms a missing persons case has been opened for the family. Now, if you've got any information on the Dean family, you're asked to contact the Carter County Sheriff's Department. Well, thanks to a good supply of early season snow, the Big Sky Resort was able to open yesterday for Thanksgiving. Close to 800 acres of terrain now open to skiers. This year, Big Sky already has received more than 70 inches of snow. Nine lifts are open for skiers and snowboarders, and the trams open for scenic rides. Big Sky officials say it's the best opening day conditions that resort has seen in many years. Yesterday, there were a lot of, of woohoos and, and screaming from the chairlift because people were super excited. We had a powder day yesterday, so the, um, the stoke was, was quite high yesterday. Big Sky's daily ski report gives skiers the latest update on snow conditions, what lifts are operating, and a snow forecast. Well, more good snow, great temperatures, and a lot of fun. Hundreds traveling from all across Montana to hit the slopes on the opening day of Red Lodge Mountain ski season. Today, MTN Zoe Zandora made the trip to experience Red Lodge Mountain's opening day for her first time. We've been skiing, well, this is our third or second year. Oh, it's really good for this time of year. Like, I wasn't expecting there to be this much snow up in Red Lodge. Why do you like skiing and being in the snow? Because. Because why? Because I love it. Skiers, snowboarders, family and friends strap in and hit the slopes for opening day 2019. The beauty of opening on a holiday weekend, we have a fair number of people from Minnesota, North Dakota, and then all our friends from Wyoming are up too. So I just got off the triple chair at Red Lodge Mountain. The mountain is 50% open. There are 44 runs open and five lifts. Fresh powders on the ground, clear at 360 views. And I'll see you guys at the bottom. Spencer Weimer, the Director of Marketing and Revenue at Red Lodge Mountain, says it's a great start to the snow season. We're probably up about 4 or 5 percent, so that's great. I mean, that shows that our Billings and Cody skiers are more and more excited about us skiing at Red Lodge this year. I like going on the triple chairlift because it makes me go fast and I like going fast. Views stellar. Huh, yeah, you can see everywhere. Super flat land, but uh, this is my first time skiing at Red Lodge. I work at Bridger Bowl, um, but here for uh, the th Thanksgiving and uh, opening day. 
Red Lodge Mountain offers a rental shop and a ski school with instructors that have been instructing at Red Lodge for over 40 years. Last year um, I did um, a black diamond when I went on the trickle chairlift. Pretty great. I've been, you know, turning in, pressing pretty hard and not finding anything on the bottom, you know, but uh, it is pretty fun. When it comes to opening day at Red Lodge Mountain, each year is a little different and it just depends on Mother Nature. And this year, she's decided it was going to be a great year. In Red Lodge, Zoe Zandora, MTN News. Whether it's hitting the trails in one of Montana's premier ski mountains or fishing in a stream below, the lure of the outdoors continues to hook a lot of people. And that's good news for Montana's economy. The Montana Governor's Office of Outdoor Recreation reports that Montana's outdoor recreation industry accounts for $7.1 billion in consumer spending and supports more than 71,000 jobs. That's the second largest sector of the state's economy. Now, Butte's small business owners are hoping local shoppers won't leave town to do their Christmas shopping this year. MTN's John Amy spoke with local business owners on this Black Friday to find out why they need the support of local shoppers. Butte may have lost some large retail stores, but there are still plenty of small stores in town to spend your money locally this holiday season. We're hoping that people will look local first before they head out of town or before they look on online at home. Economic leaders are pushing the advantages of shopping at Butte's many little boutiques and mom and pop stores. So shopping local really has that customer service that people don't get when they shop online or at the big retailers. If there's a place to park, I'm shopping. <laughs> Some say it's very convenient to shop in Butte. There's nice parking uptown. There's nice parking all around Butte. Why would you go to a larger city where you have to go around the parking lot five times? Small business owners are hoping local shoppers will support them because they rely on strong sales to get through the holidays. Being a small business, you support the community, you know, by donating to different adventures and um, benefits. So it's nice for them to come back and shop in our stores. And while Butte has lost some major retailers, there has been an increase in small businesses opening in Uptown Butte. And economic leaders hope this will make up some of that retail void. We're seeing kind of a, maybe some sort of a, an, a, an after effect of Herberger's closing. People are starting to open up other shops. It's not, you know, huge, but it's pretty encouraging. On Black Friday, a couple from Missoula spent the morning shopping at some of Butte's small businesses. I mean, even when we shop in Missoula, I try and stay at the local markets and just keep the money circulating through the community. And that's, that's very important, especially for smaller rural towns in Montana. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Well, the state capitol is looking and smelling a lot more like the holidays tonight. Today, a crew of 10 set up the capitol Christmas tree in the rotunda. It takes a lot of equipment, about seven bins of ornaments and 10 strands of lights to get the tree looking picture perfect. It also takes some treasure state teamwork. This year's 30 foot Douglas fir is from Deer Creek in Lewis and Clark County. That tree was donated by the McDonald family ranch in Canyon Creek, north of Helena and was harvested by Wayne Sherrill logging from Lincoln, Montana. This is the people's house. And so, you know, traditionally people like to put in a tree for the holidays. And secondly, uh, because we're an agricultural and timber state, uh, you know, it's, it's something really cool that we can do that we can kind of showcase, you know, um, a really important industry in Montana at the same time. The Capitol tree will be on display in the Capitol building until the week after Christmas. Coming up, we meet a local Montana hero who was injured in the line of duty. His emotional story just ahead. And right after the break, Connor Pregaster delivers your statewide weekend weather forecast. We'll be right back. 